Hey, it's Mr. Hutch here, and we are on Lesson 11-3 to talk about angle relationships and parallel lines. Really, we're talking about parallel lines uh, that are cut through with a transversal. Uh, and we'll talk about the, what that means in just a second here. Uh, so here's what I want you to take a look at. These two are parallel lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and show those. To show that they're parallel, they're going to have um, arrows on them. Not the arrows that represent the line, uh, but their own little arrows like that. And that just means parallel. It's a symbol. Um, this thing here uh, is called the transversal. Okay, And what that means is um, it's a line or a... Uh, line segment or array that's cutting through a set of parallel lines. Um, and so because it's cutting through parallel lines, uh, it allows us to know some things about um, the angles that it makes. Okay, so you can see it makes this angle uh, and it also makes this angle. You can sort of see visually that those look like the same angle and you'd be right. Uh, there's a lot of rules like that when you have a transversal um, cutting through parallel lines like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look uh, at your first section here for learn. Um, they want you to understand that these symbol, what these symbols mean. Uh, when you have perpendicular lines, uh, this means perpendicular. Uh, and then we obviously have our right angle symbol that you're well aware of. So let's head down to here and take a look at uh, transversals. Okay, So any line that intersects uh, two or more other lines in a plane is called a transversal. Um, in this case, they're going through parallel lines, which uh, creates some special opportunities for us, like we talked about. Okay, uh, and so you can see something like this. This when this transversal goes through these parallel lines, uh, all these create ninety degrees here. Okay, everywhere you look. Um, it's not true when the transversal is at an angle, though. Uh, but there are some other things that become true. So what we end up having is we end up having these things called interior angles. Okay, uh, so we have our parallel lines right here. Okay, uh, and then everything, all the angles inside the parallel lines. Okay, if you think of this as inside, are called interior angles. And so take a guess what all the ones on the outsides would be called. Those would be called, if you know, exterior angles, okay? Uh, and so what are all the interior angles? Uh, the interior angles are angle 3, 4, angle 5, and angle 6, okay? The outside ones are called exterior angles. So we have angle 1, 2, uh, 7, and 8, and those are all exterior. So there's, there's some things that uh, we'll learn about interior and exterior angles. So let's take a look. Um, at some other vocabulary. So some other vocabulary are we have interior ones that alternate, okay, meaning they're not on the same side, and we have some exterior ones that alternate, meaning they're not on the same side with each other. Um, the ones that are on the same side are called corresponding angles, okay, and so those are your uh, three different types that I want you to focus on right now. So if you look here, you can see uh, that measurement of angle four, which is right here, uh, is equal to the measurement of angle six right here, okay? And so these are what are called uh, alternate interior angles. And you can see that they are the same, okay? They're equal to each other. Uh, we also have uh, the measurement of angle three is equal to this one, the measurement of angle five. So one of the things that we learned then are what? Alternate interior angles are the same. So that's good information. And what I love about these is uh, it's this really neat puzzle of figuring out an angle measurement because of all these rules. It's sort of like a Sudoku puzzle in a way, uh, or a Ken Ken type of thing with the logical thinking. Uh, so we have these other ones uh, as well that are... We have these other ones as well that uh, are in different locations, and those are 
alternate exterior. So we've talked about alternate interior. Um, the same is true for alternate exterior. And so we have this angle one, and it's not on the same side because it's called alternate. Okay, it alternates to the other side, um, but they're both exterior. Remember, meaning they're outside of the parallel lines. So we have alternate exterior are the same, so 1 and 7, uh, which also means that these other alternate exteriors are the same. So angle 2 and angle 8. Okay, So all the alternate interiors are the same, and alternate exterior exteriors are the same with each other. So the next ones are corresponding. Corresponding just means that they're uh, in the same position uh, on the two lines in relation to that to that transversal. Okay, and so corresponding uh, has to be the same position. Okay, so if you look, you have angle one, okay, and angle five. They're both in that same position. They're on the same side. Okay. And so they are equal to each other. Okay. And so if I spotlighted something like uh, angle four here, okay, where is the angle that's in the exact same position in this bottom section? Okay. So if you look at them as like sections here, uh, which one has is in the same section as angle four? Uh, and you can see it's angle eight. And so I'm going to do a double. Uh, to show angle 4 and angle 8 are the same. And so that's over here, actually. Uh, so take a look here, and you can test yourself a little bit. If I were to highlight angle 2 with three arcs here, um, which one down below is in the same position as angle 2? If you said angle 6, you would be correct. Okay, And so those are corresponding angles. Okay, Don't get those confused. Uh, we talked about in our last lesson... Um, complementary corners, okay? Corresponding and complementary are two different things that you're going to have to keep track of. Uh, all right, and so obviously three and seven are also uh, corresponding angles, and so they're equal to each other, okay? Let's take a look uh, at example one of classifying angles. It says angle one and angle seven are exterior angles, so we're looking at angle one and angle seven, uh, but they are on opposite sides of that transversal, which means that they're alternate exterior. Okay, And so we want to get comfortable uh, with using this language. Okay, So what would you say angle 2 is with angle 4? Okay, So first be looking uh, and realize that you want to always be identifying your parallel lines. So here's your parallel lines. Okay. And so then we can see our transversal poking through there. So angle 2 and angle 4, are they on the same side as each other? Well, yes, they are. They're on the same side of the transversal because here's the uh, transversal right here. Okay, So 2 and 4 on the same side. If they're on the same side, they automatically are called corresponding angles and they are the same uh, because they're in the same location Uh where the transversal intersects there, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and move down to example two, classifying angle pairs. So they're asking you to look at angle two and angle six, okay? So we want to look, here's the parallel lines, okay? And that means this is the transversal. Uh, are 2 and 6 on the same side of the transversal? Yeah, they're both on the right side. Okay, If they're both on the same side, then what are they? They are corresponding. Okay, All right, let's go ahead and fill this in. So angle 2 and 6 are in the, uh, in the same position on the two lines in relation to the transversal, so they're corresponding angles. Okay. All right, and then next, let's go ahead and do a check and have you see if you can remember uh, these things. So what is the relationship between angle four and angle five? So here's angle four, here's angle five, okay? Identify your transversal. The transversal runs here. 
okay? Are angle five and four on the same side as each other? Okay, on the transversal? No, they're not. And so automatically we know that they are alternate one of those, okay? And so then identify your parallel lines, okay? So this is everything on the interior of your parallel lines. And so that helps us to understand uh, these are alternate, what do you think? Alternate exterior angles because they're on the outside of the parallel lines. Okay, and so we can go ahead and let's just write alternate exterior. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead to our next learn. So a lot of times what's going to happen is they're going to ask you to solve different angles based on your knowledge of alternate interior, alternate exterior, and corresponding angles. And so I can give you one angle, and you should be able to fill out all those angle spots, which is really neat, okay, because of everything that you know. Uh, so let's look at, they're telling you angle one is 105 degrees. So if this is 105 degrees, uh, I know a couple things. First of all, this is just a straight line, and I know my supplementary angles can tell me what number two is, okay? Because if this is a straight line, that's 180 degrees. If angle one is 105, I can subtract from 180 and get that answer, okay? So I have a lot of neat puzzle ways of figuring this out, okay? Let's go ahead and uh, do that work there because of the supplementary angle. So we have 180 minus 105, okay? And when we do that, uh, we should get 75 degrees. So angle two, I've just solved is 75 degrees, okay? Now there's some things that we know. Uh, we know that angle one, okay, uh, is the same as angle five, because they're on the same side, they're corresponding angles, okay? Uh, we know that angle two has to be the same as angle six, because they're corresponding angles, okay? Um, we also know things about alternate um, interior and alternate exterior. Okay. But really, think about it. There's so many ways we could do this. We see this is a straight line also, so that means this 75, the uh, supplementary angle to 75 has to be 105 degrees. Okay, We also know that to be true because these are vertical angles, right? There's so many ways we can think about uh, all of these pieces here to solve it all out. So let's go ahead and see if we can start filling some of these out. Uh, so let's see. So angle 5, we figured out angle 5 is 105 degrees. Um, angle 6 is 75 degrees. Um, angle 7, well, I know that uh, a couple things. Here's an exterior and an exterior. This is alternate exterior are the same. Uh, I also know, though, that my vertical angles are the same. Okay, so angle 7 has to be 75 degrees. So we have lots of concepts that we uh, can understand and reflect on to solve these. And angle 8, uh, because of my vertical angles being the same, uh, as well as my alternate exterior angles being the same is 105 degrees. Okay, so there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. It says, in the figure below, suppose that the measurement of angle one is 50 degrees. Um, the measurement of angle two is 130 degrees because angle one and two are what with each other? So they're sitting on this straight line, 
and they both add up to 180 degrees. So what does that mean? They are what's called supplementary. Okay, supplementary straight. Um, let's see, angle three, I'm gonna change colors. Angle three is 50 degrees because angle one and three are what kind of angles with each other? Remember, those are called vertical angles at C-A-L. Uh, let's look at the next one. Angle four is 130 degrees because one and four, uh, look, they're sitting on a straight line together, are supplementary. So those are also adjacent, um, but adjacent angles don't add up to a certain degree, so you can't use the word adjacent. Adja adjacent just means they're next to each other. Um, supplementary, though, means that they equal 180 degrees. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do example three, which is finding missile missing angle measures, not missiles. Uh, so they're letting you know information about angle two. Uh, they're letting you know that it's 105 degrees. You always want to make notes in your work to solve things out. Um, they want you to find angle 6 and angle 3 just by uh, being fed that information. So let's go ahead and look through. They're saying part A, find measurement 6. We know that angle 2 and 6 are supplementary, and so the sum of their measures has to equal what? Good, 180 degrees. Uh, and so we can do 180 minus 105, uh, and we get 75 degrees for right here. Okay. Now, now that we know angle 6, we should be able to figure out angle 3. Okay. So angle 6 and angle 3 are interior angles. And the reason we're saying that, remember, is here's my parallel lines. Okay. And this is all inside. And so angle 6 and angle 3 are interior and they're alternate. And we know alternate interior angles are the same. So 75 degrees. Okay. And so uh, their measures, since they are alternate interior, their measures are the same. Okay. Or we could say are equal. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and test out your knowledge uh, based on some of that practice. They're letting you know that line M is parallel to line N, okay? And so we do have two parallel lines with a transversal, which means that our rules can apply. If they're not parallel, then those rules don't apply. You do need to be aware of that, okay? So if measurement of angle 7 is 35 degrees, remember, one of my tips is always write it in here. So we have 35 degrees. Um, they want us to find measurement of angle 1 and measurement of angle 2 all the way over here, okay? Uh, so angle 1 and angle 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at some things that we know. Okay, I'm just going to put a dot on these so we know what we're looking for. Uh, so I know that my, first of all, this is... If I look at these, uh, here's my parallel lines. And so these are exterior of our parallel lines, and they are not on the same side, so they're alternate exterior. I know alternate exterior are the same, and so this is 35 degrees. Um, I know that this is a straight line, these together uh, equal 180, and so 180 minus 35 degrees will tell me what angle 1 is. And there we go, 145 degrees. And we've solved the puzzle. Okay. Uh, all right, example 4, look at all of this. Um, I'm glad they showed something like this. Uh, because it can get really tricky. One of the things you're going to have to do sometimes is ignore some things. So I'm going to white this out a little bit 
um, so you're not paying attention to it for the moment. Okay, And if I sort of white that out, you can see we have our parallel lines and we have a transversal. Um, but we could ignore line P and just pay attention to Q as the transversal um, to solve different things as well. Uh, and so sometimes you do have to ignore uh, other lines to be able to use our tips and tricks. So I just want you to be aware of that. Um, they're asking us what is the measurement of angle 7, okay? And angle 7 does exist because of that weird line. Uh, so we're going to have to use all of our information that we have, but be aware of where the actual transversal is when you're using those transversal angle rules, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some information, see what we can figure out. So the measure of angle one is 40 degrees, okay? And so we're using this transversal if we want to be using tricks with this 40 degrees, okay? Uh, and so I know that alternate exterior angles are the same, so this has to be 40 degrees, okay? Uh, now, understand none of these angles created here are from this transversal. And so you, you have to be really careful again with any of our rules with that, okay? Um, our alternate interiors and things like that, um, for example this interior two would go with this whole thing here, not seven or eight by itself. Um, but that can still help us out, right? Okay, so let's sort of roll with that a little bit. Um, we have angle two here. So how can I figure out what the measurement of angle two is? If I know what angle one is, I know that's 40, uh, they're right up against a straight line. So 180 minus 40 okay, is 140 degrees. Okay? So I actually know that angle 2 is 140 degrees because 140 plus 40 equals 180, which is a straight line. Uh, now, because I know that, okay, uh, I also know that this entire distance here is 140 degrees, but realize it's that whole distance. Uh, but because of that other random transversal going through, um, what else do we notice? We notice this, right? So how many degrees is this specific angle? Well, this is 90 degrees because we know that symbol, right? Uh, and if this is 90 and 7 is mystery, but we know that that whole thing there equals 140 because the alternate interior angles here. Okay, uh, now we can go ahead and do our 140 minus 90. And 140 minus 90 is 50 degrees. And so now we just figured out what angle 7 is. Okay, so you got to be really careful with your notes, but it is a fun little puzzle when you understand those concepts of angles. So we go down through. Um, they're telling us to find measurement of angle 6. So let's see how we did here. Um, they knew that because 1 and 6 are alternate exteriors, yep, they did the same thing that we did, 40 degrees. Uh, finding measurement of angle 7. Let's see what they did for this. Because 6, 7, and 8 form a straight line. Oh, they used this concept that all of this equals 180 uh, to help figure some things out. So that's another neat thing. Uh, we know this is 90, and we know that this whole side is 90. Okay, so um, they started to figure some things out with that. Okay, uh, so let's see. So they said a measurement of angle 6 uh, plus which was 40, um, plus the measurement of angle 7, which is mystery, okay, or x. Um, the measurement of angle 8 we knew was 90, and so all we had to do was solve for x, okay, uh, because we knew this is 130. 
Uh, and so then we end up with our subtracting under 30 from both sides, and we still get the same thing that we got of 50 degrees. But what's neat is you're able to see there's multiple ways of solving these puzzles, which is what I think is really fun. Okay, um, Here's one for you to try out. Okay, Again, first thing you want to identify is where are the parallel lines. So here's the parallel lines. And so we have two different transversals. But you can see the main one they're focusing on is this one right here. Okay, um, because that's where all those angles are written on. Uh, but there's still going to be some other information from that other transversal. So let's go ahead um, and you can pause right now and see if you can figure out the angle of measure four. All right, let's see what you did. Uh, the measure of angle seven is 125 degrees. So we always want to make those notes, right? Okay. Uh, and now this starts giving us from some information. We already know that angle 5 is 90 degrees because they let us know with that symbol. Okay, And so now I want to be using my tricks of supplementary angles and alternate exteriors uh, and things like that. Okay, uh, So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we know that angle 7 is 125. Uh, we know that, let's see, uh, let's figure out what angle 10 is, okay, so let's see, this is a straight line, okay, so we have 180 minus 125, 180 minus 125 is 55 degrees, so angle 10 is 55 degrees. Let me just change colors here. All right, so now, because of my rules of corresponding, I know that 10 is the same as 6, okay, because these are corresponding angles. They're in the same position. Okay. Uh, and so let's go ahead and we can mark this as 55 degrees. Uh, now because I know that, okay, um, I can figure out some other information here. Okay. Uh, so let's see. We know that... Uh, let's see. Ooh, vertical angles. Number 9 is 125 degrees, which tells us that this whole thing is 125 degrees because those are corresponding angles. Okay, uh, And so since the whole thing is 125 degrees, I know that number 5 is 90 degrees, so we can do 125 degrees minus 90 and 125 minus 90 is 35 degrees. So you can see how you work through that. Um, I didn't really need to figure out angle six over there, uh, but as you go, you start solving little spots and figure out uh, what you need. So the angle of measure of angle four is 35 degrees, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your application here. So in construction, here's a photo of a bridge. They're saying line A is parallel to line B. Okay, so they're just letting you know where the parallel uh, lines are. Um, measurement of angle one is 16x. Okay, let's pick a brighter color here. So we have 16x is that measurement. Uh, measurement of angle two is 10x plus 30. Uh, and then we need to figure out angle 3 based on that information. So let's zoom in and really look at this uh, and figure out what we know here. And so we have our parallel lines. Uh, and if I'm looking at my parallel lines here, okay, um, I see that this one is in the same location as this one. So course, they're corresponding. And corresponding means that they're equal to each other. So let's do some notes over here on this side. So we know that 16x 
is equal to 10x plus 30. Okay, so this is what we know is true because of their corresponding angles. So let's go ahead and solve for x. Um, so I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. Okay, uh, and we get 6x equals 30. And let's go ahead and divide 6 by both sides, and we get x equals 5. Okay, so now that we know x is 5, we can actually figure out what those degrees are. So let's go ahead and substitute um, x in. So I'm going to sort of pull some work out here. So 16 times 5 is that one. And this one is 10 times 5 plus 30. So let's go ahead and solve those out. So 16 times 5. Uh, this equals 80 degrees. Uh, and we have 50, 60, 70, 80 degrees. And that's true. They're equal to each other. Good. Okay. Um, since I know that this is now 80 degrees, because these are supplementary, they're on a straight line with each other, uh, we know they have to equal 180 degrees, which tells me that angle 3 is 100 degrees. And there we go. We solved the problem. Okay. All right. Here's your check to try out on your own. Same idea with some uh, more complicated expressions. Uh, they're letting you know that the measure of angle 1, so make your notes, is 5x plus 24. And the measure of angle 2 is 7x. So based on what you know, they want you to find the actual measurement of angle 1. Okay, So what do you know is true about these? Find your parallel lines. Is always your first step okay and so if these are my parallel lines okay that means one and two are exteriors because they're not on the inside of here okay um, and are they on opposite sides of the transversal they are so they're called alternate exteriors which means alternate exteriors are equal to each other so go ahead and set it up 5x plus 24 equals 7x solve for x and we can figure out what that actual measurement for one is once we substitute it. Uh, so let's go ahead and subtract 5x from both sides. So we have 2x equals 24, divide by 2, and now we know that 12 equals x, but we need to go ahead and substitute that in to there. Uh, so we have 5 times 12 plus 24, and that is the measurement of angle 1. And we have 84 degrees is our answer. All right. Let's go ahead and move down to practice now. Um, this is your homework. Uh, if you need help... Remember, it tells you you can look at examples 1 and 2, look at examples 3, and so on. Okay, uh, Go ahead and do that as homework, and then we'll go over that tomorrow.